Welcome to this presentation during which we will be introducing the new WHO technical considerations and case definitions to improve viral hepatitis surveillance. My name is Ivan Houten and I work at the Global Hepatitis Program at WHO headquarters in Geneva in Switzerland. I will introduce today some of the salient elements of a new WHO document that we've just produced on viral hepatitis surveillance. We're dealing with four main hepatitis viruses. Hepatitis A virus, Hepatitis E virus, Hepatitis B virus, and Hepatitis C virus. They are ranked according to how they affect humans, not by alphabetical order. Hepatitis A and E virus are mostly transmitted through the fecal-oral route. They mostly cause acute hepatitis. Acute hepatitis can occasionally be fatal, but in most cases it is self-limiting. Hepatitis B and C viruses are mostly transmitted through exposure to blood and body fluids. They can also cause acute hepatitis, but the majority of the harm that they cause come from a silent chronic hepatitis, which after some times causes sequelae, including hepatocellular carcinoma and cirrhosis. In 2013, viral hepatitis was the seventh leading cause of death globally. The majority of this mortality was associated with hepatocellular carcinoma and cirrhosis, which were consequences of chronic infections with hepatitis B and hepatitis C. WHO is responding to viral hepatitis through the Global Health Sector Strategy on Viral Hepatitis. It has five strategic directions. First, information for action is about getting data for decision making. This new surveillance document is part of that strategic direction. This is a cover of our new document called Technical Considerations and Case Definitions to Improve Surveillance of Viral Hepatitis. It is about 70 pages and we try to make it as useful as possible with a number of tables and figures. Before we discuss the recommended approach, it may be useful to uh, review some of the technical issues that we have to address in order to operate a successful viral hepatitis surveillance system. If we're aware of these issues, uh, we will be more effective in our work. First, viral hepatitis has multiple disease outcomes. Therefore, we need to consider acute hepatitis, chronic hepatitis, and sequelae. Second, different forms of viral hepatitis can have the same clinical presentation. Acute viral hepatitis a, B, C, or uh, E cannot be distinguished on the basis of the clinical features alone. Sometimes also the clinical picture will not allow differentiating acute from chronic hepatitis. Therefore, we will need in vitro diagnostics. Third, most infections with hepatitis viruses are asymptomatic. This means that we will have to plan for biomarker surveys. Finally, viral hepatitis interact with the natural and human environment of each country in a way that is very specific. Therefore, we will need to tailor the viral hepatitis uh, response to the specific epidemiological situation of each country. The audience of this new document includes national staff working on surveillance for communicable diseases. We've written the document with a main focus on low-income countries and middle-income countries. However, we followed some general principles that should make the document relevant also in high-income countries. The objectives of this document include uh, making sure that it can be useful to develop or strengthen uh, viral hepatitis surveillance and identifying an approach that will make surveillance work in the national context. We try to prepare this document in a way that would help understanding why is it that we do surveillance. In fact, viral hepatitis surveillance has three main purposes. The first purpose is to detect outbreaks, monitor trends in incidents, and identify risk factor for new incident infection. 
This will be done with surveillance for acute hepatitis. The second purpose is to estimate the prevalence of chronic infection and monitor trends in sentinel groups. This will be done with surveillance of chronic infection. The third purpose is to estimate the burden of sequelae, including epitocellular carcinoma and cirrhosis. This will be achieved with the surveillance for cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma. These three uh, purposes are addressed with three technical approaches. For acute hepatitis surveillance, we will be using the information to prevent new infections. The population under surveillance will be patients presenting with acute hepatitis in healthcare facility. For surveillance of chronic prevalent infection, we will be using the information to manage chronic infection. The population under surveillance will be people uh, without acute hepatitis that are either in the population or presenting for care in healthcare facilities. Uh, for the third uh, purpose, which is about the burden of sequelae, the use of the information will be to monitor the reduction in mortality. The population under surveillance will be patients with sequelae presenting mostly in healthcare facilities. One of the pieces of this document that we're very happy about is that we're able to share some new case definitions for the surveillance of viral hepatitis. This includes some case definition for the surveillance of acute hepatitis. We have a case definition for unspecified acute viral hepatitis, which can be uh, made on the basis of mostly clinical signs and symptoms. This case definition can be used for syndromic surveillance, which will allow the detection of outbreaks. However, if biomarker testing is available, then we can have a case definition for type-specific acute hepatitis, which will differentiate acute hepatitis A, B, C, or E. We also have a set of case definition for chronic uh, hepatitis. In the same way that the case definition for acute hepatitis include clinical and biomarker criteria, the case definition for chronic hepatitis include one clinical criteria, which is the absence of acute hepatitis, and biomarker criteria that are adapted to uh, the case definitions of hepatitis B or hepatitis C. In a given country, there will usually be an existing surveillance system for viral hepatitis surveillance. For this reason, WHO suggests to improve the existing system rather than creating a new system. The steps to improve the system are the following. First, one needs to make an inventory of what is already there. This may include some form of acute hepatitis surveillance or ad hoc surveys that have estimated the prevalence of hepatitis B or hepatitis C as chronic infections in the population. Second, we need to obtain some estimates of hepatitis B virus or hepatitis C virus prevalence. One needs to identify opportunities to coordinate these surveys, for example, with HIV or DHS surveys. Third, we need to improve or optimize the surveillance for acute hepatitis. This may include syndromic surveillance for acute hepatitis, which will allow to detect outbreaks, or sentinel surveillance for type-specific acute viral hepatitis. Fourth, when we're done with these three first aspects, the country may want to consider to establish a surveillance system for sequelae, including cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma. Because we're looking for different outcomes, ranging from acute hepatitis to chronic infections to sequelae, we need to work with the right professionals and the right program. For acute hepatitis, one would have to work with communicable disease surveillance when doing surveillance for acute unspecified hepatitis. For surveillance of type-specific acute hepatitis, one needs to work with hepatology centers or other places caring for patients with acute hepatitis that have good biomarker diagnostics. 
for chronic infections, one needs to coordinate with API biomarker surveys that are made to evaluate the impact of immunization uh, on the prevalence of hepatitis B surface antigen, or with other surveys, such as HIV surveys or DHS surveys. Finally, for sequelae, collaborations are needed with hepatology centers, vital registration systems, and cancer registries. Now that we've reviewed some of the elements of the document, I would like to share with you some of the next steps that we're thinking about in order to make sure that this document is useful. First, we'll be preparing a toolbox for practical use of this document that will be on our WHO website. Second, we'll be working on pilot implementation of these technical considerations in a set of countries, maybe yours. Third, we'll be making sure that we get all the feedback on the use of this document in country so that in the long term it can be improved and made more relevant. Finally, uh, within two years, which is by 2018, the WHO is planning to consolidate all the tools and document in the field of strategic information as a consolidated strategic information guidelines for viral hepatitis. Thank you very much for your attention.